Okay, moving on to this. Late last week marked a significant occasion, um, at least an occasion that we're supposed to believe is significant. It was the 25th anniversary of the death of Matthew Shepard. And the media and many on the left published their tributes to uh, Matthew Shepard, who they say, of course, uh, and, and have been saying for two and a half decades now, was the victim of a barbaric anti-gay hate crime. That's what they say. And so there are a lot of examples I could show you of, of the left um, talking about this and, and talking about Matthew Shepard and a lot of tweets, a lot of articles and, and you know video tributes and all the rest of it. So here's just one, one example. This is from the Daily Beast. It says, um, in his 1968 speech at the National Cathedral, Cathedral, Martin Luther King Jr. proclaimed that the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice. While that may be true, there are peaks and valleys along that path, especially when it comes to tolerance for and acceptance of those who don't fit into traditional roles and paradigms. Consequently, reminders of past injustices and the need to keep fighting for equality and compassion remain ever relevant. That's why Investigation Discovery is commemorating the 25th anniversary of the murder of Matthew Shepard with a heartfelt documentary about his life, his slaying, and the impact it had on a movement dedicated to achieving freedom for all. Premiering October 9th, October 9th the Matthew Shepard story in American Hate Crime is a look back at a yesterday that feels long ago and yet also not so far away. Its story is one that, in 1998, made national headlines and helped drive a campaign for hate crime legislation and, in the process, a wide range of LGBTQ plus rights. That it took a horrific homicide to spur such changes continues to be a sad commentary about how civil liberties are acquired. Sadder still, though, is this documentary's coda about the potential limits of progress and the uh, consequent uh, uh, necessity of pushing back against the omnipresent forces of malicious bigotry. Now, it goes on from there. Uh, to tell the story of how Shepard was targeted for his sexuality and, and viciously murdered because of it. In fact, we have a clip from um, uh, that, that uh, Investigation Discovery put out uh, from their documentary, which is just someone reading a letter uh, from Matthew Shepard um, to show what a great guy he was and how sad it all is. Let's play that clip. Hey, Mom, I'm writing to say hello. How is everything? I've been okay, kind of homesick, having trouble with getting into this swing of things. But it won't last long, I hope. I've been real depressed, and I think it's let down. I came back, and the weather was crummy, and I miss home. Miss you. Love, Matt. Okay. So, we got the dramatic music in the background, reading the letter. Um reading the letter from Matthew Shepard, like he's some sort of a great historical figure. Um, and this is all part of the same narrative, again, that, that Matthew Shepard was, uh, a, is a martyr for gay rights, and he was killed for being gay. And, and the problem, of course, with that narrative is that it's a total, absolute lie. Okay, And it, and it still, somehow it still surprises me that there are people out there, lots of people, who don't know that this was a lie. You know, I was tweeting about it yesterday uh, briefly, and I heard from a lot of people, of course, a lot of people on the left, who were, uh, even they don't can't deny that it's a lie, but instead they just get mad at you for talking about it. And But even uh, there are many other people not on the left who said, well, I hadn't heard this before. I didn't realize. It's the first I'm hearing it. I always thought Matthew Shepard, um, so, and I don't blame them. It's just, this just shows how uh, the left's control of information, while it has been compromised in recent years uh, because of you know the, the internet and social media and all that, it's it, it's they still largely control the spread of information, and therefore largely have the ability to decide to determine our own history and how we view our own history um, and uh, events in history, including events that were not all that long ago. So. Uh, the narrative about, in case you didn't know this, if you heard about Matthew Shepard, and everyone heard about Matthew Shepard, and uh, I, you know, in my generation, I graduated high school in 2004, and Matthew Shepard uh, murder was in, um, in, what was it, in, in 1998. So, you know, I'm, I'm right in the generation where they, re- they, they hit us hard. They hit us very hard with the Matthew Shepard thing. And I was told, well, I was, remember hearing about this in school. And they would tell us about what a terrible hate crime it was. And of course, when I was a kid in school, I, I believed it. I didn't, you know, I didn't question it. 
Um, but we know now that all that is untrue. Now, it, the only thing that's true is that he was murdered. Yes. So he's, he was a person who was murdered. He's one of the thousands of murder victims that, that we, we've had in this country over the last 25 years. Um, but what we know now and what we've known for a long time, and this, again, is not in dispute, is that he was not killed for being gay. This was a drug-related dispute. Matthew Shepard was a drug dealer. He was a meth dealer. He wasn't just dealing any drug. He was dealing meth. Okay, He was dealing straight poison. Um, and his murderers were also drug dealers. And they were gay too. So Matthew Shepard was a gay drug addict and drug dealer. And, and he had even had, had, uh, had previous sexual encounters with at least one of his killers. So he was killed by a former gay lover um, because he was a drug dealer. Not because he's gay. That's the fact. Okay? It's, it, it's, uh, it's, it is not, despite what the left says, it is not dangerous to be gay in this country. At least you're not going to be, you're not going to be killed for it. There are uh, other dangers, health dangers and so on. Uh, but there's, you're not going to be hunted down and killed for it. Now, if you're a meth dealer, on the other hand, that is a very dangerous occupation. Now, now you are in a world uh, with people who, by definition, don't care about the law, are, are uh, very often very violent people. And this is the world you're in now. And so Matthew Shepard is one of the many meth dealers and drug dealers who have been killed. I mean, that's a, now, is it, as I said, when I talked about this on Twitter, um, Again, it's it's revealing that when you bring this, the left, they won't even, most of them won't deny what I'm saying. Not directly, because they know they can't. It's just, they know they can't. Um, instead, they'll, you know, they'll just label you a homophobe. Well, how dare you bring this up in the first place? Um, or they'll try some, they'll, they'll try to, well, that doesn't mean the death isn't sad and shouldn't be remembered. You know, Every, uh, every murder is sad in its own way, I suppose. But first of all, I got to be honest with you. I don't spend a lot of time uh, mourning the deaths of meth dealers. I, I kind of feel like you get into that line of work, then, uh, and, it, and, it, and ultimately it, it claims your life. Well, that's on you. It's a terrible thing. The whole thing is sad. Of course it's sad. It's sad that somebody would get into dealing meth in the first place. And the whole thing is sad. I, I, I wish that nobody would. I wish that Matthew Shepard had lived a, a more productive life and he was still alive to this day, but, uh, but he's not. The G20, or Group of 20, is an international forum for governments and central bank governors. It was established in response to the financial crisis of the uh, late 1990s with the aim of promoting international financial stability. Well, last month, the G20 announced a plan to impose digital currencies and digital IDs on their respective populations. Central bank digital currencies essentially allow the government to track every purchase you make. Even if you don't follow international economic policies that closely, you should be concerned about this. And you should consider diversifying at least some of your assets into physical gold with the help of Birch Gold Group. Call Birch Gold today to preserve your savings in a tax-sheltered retirement account. If you have an IRA or 401k from a previous employer that's just gathering dust, we'll call Birch Gold and they will help you convert it into an IRA in gold. You won't pay a penny out of pocket. They simply convert that 401k that's just sitting in a bank somewhere into physical gold, which can't be tampered with. Text Walsh to 989898. And Birch Gold will send you a free info kit on gold. If digital currency becomes a reality, you'll be glad you have something physical to fall back on. Text Walsh to 989898 and claim your free info kit on gold today. But the point is, you know, the people that, that say, well, we should still mourn his death. Really? Are there any other drug dealers that died 25 years ago that you're mourning? No, none at all. And there are drug dealers that died yesterday. Are you mourning any of them? Any of them? The only reason we know Matthew Shepard's name, only reason, is because of the story that was made up about him. If not for that story, nobody would remember his name. If this story was never invented, and I came to you out of nowhere and said, hey, you know, 25 years ago, this meth dealer was killed in a pretty brutal fashion uh, by uh, some of his meth dealing buddies. Isn't that a terrible tragedy? You'd look at me, you'd look at me with like a blank expression. You'd say, you'd say, well, 
I mean, it's always sad when someone's killed, but I, what do you, why are we talking about this now? People die every day. Like, why is that a special a, a tragedy? The only, again, the only reason anyone knows his name is because of the story that was made up, which is why it is anytime his, his name is brought up, it is always relevant to point out, oh, you know, the only reason you're talking about him, you know, that the only reason it's a, it is a lie. And yet, in spite of these facts, the media still pushes Shepard as a martyr. Now, it's true. If you, if you uh, refute it and say, well, here's what actually happened, they're not, most of them will not try to argue with you because they know they can't. But they'll still push it anyway. They know it's not true. Anyone who's researched this case knows it's not true. And they push it. And I think that, that shows us two things. Number one, that the left, and neither of these are uh, revelations really, but the left remains committed to their false narratives to the end. They, will, they never let go of their false narratives. They will, they will stay committed to them forever. Never let it go. Um, this is the kind of consistency that they have. It's, it's, it's a bad consistency because they are consistently liars and they stick to a lie. But they are relentless. And that is one of the reasons why the left has been successful uh, in the culture war, why not just successful, but it's why they they have it's why they own the culture. The culture, even to this point, is still theirs. And we as conservatives are kind of, uh, you know, we are the uh, sort of guerrilla fighters in this culture war because we don't we don't have power over any of the institutions. They have all the institutional power, and this is one of the ways that they achieved it. By establishing their narrative, establishing their story, and sticking to it always, no matter what, at any cost. So that's one thing we learned. For the other thing is that um, leftism, as I've said many times, is essentially a religion. And it's a religion of self-worship, which is another way of saying that it's Satanism. You know, it's kind of a secular Satanism. Um, and uh, a cult, maybe we, would be a better word for it. And any cult has its foundational myths. And the leftism is the same way. It has its foundational myths. Um, and the problem with a foundational myth is that you can never really admit that it's a myth because it lays at the foundation of everything else that you're saying and doing. And if you admit that it's a myth, then it destabilizes the whole structure. And on the left, all of their foundational myths are based in victimhood. Okay, like they don't have any heroes. They don't have anyone that they admire, really, for being triumphant and victorious. All of their myths are about victimhood. All of their heroes are victims. And, and very often, these are the martyrs that they invent are people. It's not even like these are people who died fighting for a cause. It's not like these are people who lived impressive lives uh, and then were martyred. No, it's, these are people who did nothing constructive with their lives. In fact, were, were, were in many cases, were burdens on society, drug dealers, drug addicts, and then were killed. And it's the manner of their death that the left finds useful. Um, or rather, I should say, it's what the left can say. It's the lie that the left can make up about the manner of the death that they find useful. I mean, think about it. The, the, for the race hustlers on the left, you have the race hustlers and the gender hustlers. Uh, and on the race hustlers, they're right now, they're, they're number one saint, the highest you know, in the hierarchy, in the saintly hierarchy, is George Floyd. And then for the gender hustlers and, you know, the, the, the gender and, and sexuality wing of leftism, um, they have Matthew Shepard. And in one case, you have a violent criminal drug addict. In the other case, you have a meth dealer junkie. 
And these are their two most blessed, most revered saints. And in both cases, they will look you in the face and just simply lie to you about how those people died and why. And if you dare correct them, they'll um, recoil in horror. Because I, we, we are supposed to, even if, what they tell you is that even if you realize that what they're saying is a lie, you should still have a hushed reverence. You should have a hushed reverence. Because these people were killed after all. So, so how dare you? So they've, they're, they're dead. And so that gives us the right to say whatever we want about them. So if you, if you uh, dispute their narrative, it is somehow a, 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 you're, you're disrespecting the memories of these uh, great people. Now, I don't know about you, but I think uh, when somebody dies, I mean, the first and most basic way that we can respect them, whoever they are, is by being honest about who they were. You know, when you turn them into some sort of mascot, um, among many other things, uh, I would say that that is that's how you are degrading them and uh, and their memory, such as it is. Hey, YouTube, thanks for listening to the show. If you'd like access to my full show with no ads, you should go to dailywire.com and use promo code Walsh to get two months free on all annual plans. See you there.